Welcome to the Hedrich Net Podcast. I'm Michelle, also known as Hedrich Net on Instagram, Ravelry, and now YouTube. Um, this is going to be a knitting podcast about my delve into more natural rustic yarn since all I've been using lately is acrylic and kind of moving towards the superwash um, wool, but trying to get a little bit more into the nice feeling uh, rusticy wools. So I figured I could document that here and I'm really excited about it. Um, a little bit about me. I live in Southern America, Southeastern America. Um, we moved here in 2019 from Japan, which was amazing. And we have a Husky and a Malinois and I have five rats. I don't know if you'll be able to hear them. They're being kind of rowdy this morning for some reason. Usually they're sleeping. And I have a giant lizard. And now the dogs are barking. Great start. All right. Um, I work on a horse farm about 20 minutes away and it's my dream job. It's amazing. I love it so much. I get to hang out with animals all day. I don't have to deal with any people. Super perfect. Um, I started knitting in 2015. I my mom kind of taught me my mom taught me how to crochet when I was young and then I want to say in high school maybe she taught me how to knit but she didn't really know how to cast on or off so it was basically just us figuring out how to do that and then her teaching me like the actual stitches and then I get to the I knit this huge long scarf and I got to the end and I was just like what do I do and she's like I don't know. So we had to figure that out too. And then after that, I just put down knitting and crocheted like literally everything for everyone. And now it hurts my wrists, so I don't do it much. Since I started knitting while we were living in Japan, it was very hard for me to find any kind of natural yarns. And if I did, they were literally like in these and they were expensive. So I just knit with acrylic that I found and but held me over. I I made some sweaters. I don't really wear them. I've given a lot away. There I did go through a period where I was watching a lot of Christy Glass knits and I made like everything was pinks and bright purples and like super colorful stuff and then I ended up giving a lot of that to my sister because I tend to lean more towards the earth tones and like the darker colors and so yeah, I don't have a lot of my early knits left. Some of the grays, I knit a lot of gray sweaters, which I'd never wear, because <laughs> they just, I don't know. Acrylic just, it doesn't keep you warm. On our way here from, because we flew into Seattle when we landed after leaving Japan, we cross country road tripped all the way to the East Coast and we stopped in Yellowstone and I was wearing one of my acrylic sweaters and I was freezing. I had to wrap myself in a blanket. It was awful. And I was like, you know what? I need some warmer stuff. Some nice natural warmer wools. And yeah, that's about all there is to know. Oh, I also have like a crap ton of plants. I don't know if you could tell. I have a plant problem. Like it's a problem. But I can share that too, because I think a lot of people right now are like super into houseplants, so let's just go ahead and jump into my FOs. Uh, this is the Ranunculus. I'm sure many people have seen and or heard about it. It's really awesome. I, I can't believe it took me this long to make one. I knit it holding two strands. One that is this Barocco, um 65% mohair, 35% silk, which is this orangey color, which is so pretty. I don't know if you can see that. It's gorgeous. And then the other color is like a white with little flecks of green and orange. There's some orange, there's some green. It's so pretty. And I wasn't expecting, I mean, I guess I, I had no idea what it would look like when I knit it up because they're just completely different. And you can see the little flecks of green, but I don't think you can tell where the orange is, but that doesn't matter because the whole thing is kind of orangey. And the sleeves are kind of short because 
I only had so much of the mohair. I have a ton of this other, it's Sprout, the other yarn. It's from the February 2020 Knit Crate. Um, and it's Super Rush Merino, I'm pretty sure. But I have a ton of that because I'm using that in, an, in another project. And, but I only had so much of the mohair. So once I got to the part where I separated for the sleeves, I was like, I'm either going to knit the body cropped or if I can get away with it longer. And so I just cast on two sleeves at a time, which sucked, and just knit them until I was happy with the length. I figure, I haven't blocked it yet because I'm lazy. <laughs> I think I cast this off like two or three weeks ago. Oh my god. But yeah, I tried to make the, the cuffs a little balloony, but it didn't really work out. But that's okay. I really like them. And I kind of really like where they sit. Because I wear a lot of like three quarter length shirts. But I like it to have a little bit more coverage because I get really chilly. And then once I was done the sleeves, I started doing the body. I think I did a few decrease rows just to make it like more fitted because I'm not a big fan of like the big flowy boxy stuff. I like things to just sit, you know? And I don't think there's anything else that I did differently. I made this small neck. Uh, I don't know if I'm super into the collar. I mean, it looks nice, but I, I generally like more like fitted collars because I like to be cozy. Not that I need it because it's hot here, which I'm going to take this off because I'm dying. Oh, I also didn't weave in the ends and the armpits. <laughs> this side, this side has a string, but that's okay. No one sees that and I'll probably never do it because mm, I don't, I'll forget. But yeah, that is my ranunculus and I will put all the designers names. This is knit or this is designed by, um, Knit Cafe Midori, I think. But some of the designers, I don't even want to try to pronounce their names because I'll mess them up. So I'm just going to put little graphics in and that'll be that. I absolutely love this sweater. I could make a second one. I know many people have made multiple. I just, I don't see the point right now in making two of the same thing. So yeah, my second finished object is the Jason's cashmere hat that I made for my husband and I'm definitely gonna steal it because it looks really cute on me and I have green eyes and he has blue eyes and I wear more green so I'm gonna steal it <laughs> but it's a really fun knit like the ribbing takes forever because it's super long but there's cute cables in there really cute cables well, I guess the ribbing's not too long. I think it's about three inches. And then you just cable, and then there's like a, a knit row in the middle. The top doesn't have... I think there's a couple... There's not that many rows of decreases. It's just... Like... Four or five rows of decreases, and then... You just cinch it. And I knit this with... This really cute yarn. It's kind of squiggly. I don't know why. It is Lang Yarns and it is 92% merino wool and 8% cashmere which I figured was fitting since it's called the Jason's cashmere hat. And yeah, super easy, super quick. I I initially made it a little bit shorter because I have a tiny head so when I try things on if they fit me I'm, I just stop but my husband has a little bit of a bigger head. So I had to rip back a couple rows and make it a, about two inches longer. Big head people. Yeah, that's a really, I don't really knit too many small things. So it's nice to like do it and then finish it and then be like, yeah, I, I cast off a project. You will see, I have many whips. So being, Getting through one project is like an accomplishment. So 
so yeah, that's that. What else is there? I did have a Dead of Night pullover that I ended up gifting to a friend because I'm weird and I give things away. <laughs> but I knit that in this gorgeous yarn that I dyed. It's really pretty purple. I've been, I've been dyeing a lot of purples. Like, this is yarn that I've dyed. Just, I don't know why I've dyed so many purples. I don't like purple to wear. I like it, but not like on me. Super weird. Everything's covered in dog hair, by the way. Yeah, it's got, there's like so many different colors in this. I love it. But this is 100% wool. And then I just used an undyed for the little crow skulls. I, it's a really awesome sweater. I'm definitely gonna make it again, just not in purple. <laughs> but I'm glad that I got to give that away to my friend because she's really gonna enjoy it. Okay, I'm gonna drink some tea. I made some, some Earl Grey for myself. This is my little dude. I need to give him a name. I got this at a Japanese thrift store <laughs> and it's the cutest mug in the world. He has his little brain. Cutie. Such a cutie. Okay. Now, let's get into the whips. What do I have first? Okay. I have oh, casted this on. I can't remember. It was either in like the very, very early spring of 2021. Maybe earlier. Ooh, I don't know. Honestly, couldn't tell you. But it is these Cloud Chaser socks from the little booklet that came with my 2020 February knit crate. So yeah, oh well, I knit a pair of these in that sprout colorway for my friend. And this pattern is so pretty. It's got like this gorgeous cable. I, I just love it so much. I don't know why I haven't worked on it. It takes a lot of brain space. Like the the pattern, there's no chart, I don't think. It's all just written instructions, which takes even more brain space. And I kind of like just to zone out when I knit <laughs> and just go. So for me to have to like sit there and read line for line, like I got so far. These don't, normally come with this heel. I did the fish lips kiss heel because I think this was the first time I did the fish lips kiss heel. I really like it. That's probably not true. I don't know. It might be. Shoot. But yeah, this pattern is really nice. This is some acrylic yarn that someone gifted me while I was living overseas. And I just, I don't know, I like the color. I just recently donated all of my acrylic yarns to a nearby church, so they can have fun with that. I, I got tired of looking at it <laughs> and my thing, because I've had it for like five years and I haven't touched most of it. So that is a pattern and whoopsie, this little booklet, back when they used to come with booklets. I don't get Netcrate anymore. I did get it for a few um, months, but they sent me a lot of the same colors. I had the natural um, membership and like these are from Netcrate, which I would consider this a pink. They had it as like a sand. I, I guess I can see it, it's really soft. That one's a knit crate. This one I love, which is a knit crate. Actually, all of these up here are knit crate, except for this one. This is a knit crate that I over dyed. It was very pink, very, very pale pink, like, like this color, but a little bit pinker. There's so many, like they all came pink and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? This, I think is linen. I. I kind of want to make a summer tea with it, but 
I'm not a big fan of like summer knits. So it's just sitting here and that's where it'll stay for a while because I have a lot of plans for other things. Okay, my second whip is a little Hermione's Everyday Sock that I'm making in this beautiful yarn that I got from the Corner of Craft. It is on the sturdy sock base. It is called Essek and it is part of the Nidical Roll little club thingy she has and I absolutely love it. It is 75% BFL and 25% nylon. And I laughed when I got it in the mail because it's a surprise. And when it got here, I was just like, oh no, what am I gonna do with this? These are my high school colors. But I really enjoy the way that it knit up. Like it's got, the stripes are cute. It's almost stripey. It's really cool. And yeah, they're really awesome. I'm, I'm so close to being done. I just, I'll pick it up and knit a few rows and then put it down because the needles are so tiny. These are the Chiaogu, um, minis? Are they minis? I think they're minis. And I love them. I don't know what length this cable is, but it's perfect. And I have my little zombie hand stitch marker. Every, um... Like early November, I go to Joann's and I buy all the little Halloween-y charms and make stitch markers out of them. <laughs> yep. These are really nice. I wanna do more of them. Cause the yarns that have been coming out for the mythical, the mythical role membership thingy. So pretty. So pretty. Okay. Oh, these also have fish lips. Kiss Hill. Which really fits my foot perfectly. I know some people don't like it, but I don't have a problem with it. And I finally figured out a really good stretchy bind off. Well, I found one on YouTube. It's, it's like the super stretchy one where you do yarn overs before going to the next stitch but you do it every other stitch so one stitch you'll knit or purl normally and then the next stitch you'll do a yarn over and then pull that over with it so it's not every single one because I did a sock with every single yarn over and the thing is like this and I hate that so this worked out really well these are gonna be very worn when they're done Ugh, so close. <laughs> what else is there? Let me see. Moonlight Romp is right here in this cute little bag that I made two years ago. I love these bags. I made three bags. You'll see them all. They're amazing. I had a lot of fun. I don't sew very much, but I really enjoy it. I make like snuggle bags and little hammocks for my rats. <laughs> but sometimes I make things for me. And I'm working on a dress right now that's taking me forever and I gave up on it for a little while. So this is the Moonlit Romp and I'm making the size three. What else? This yarn is Superwash Merino that I dyed. Oh, what is happening here? I'm not very far, which is why it's in my tiny bag. I've been working on other stuff right now, <laughs> but I am I'm in the, the little top of the first moon phase. <laughs> so, it's going good. It's fun. I absolutely love watching this gray and all of its colors show through. It's so pretty. So that is, this is actually the first yarn that I ever dyed. So, it's so nice. Super wash, but whatever. I like it. Okay. I don't really have any info on this pattern yet because I'm literally like two inches in. 
I th I think I cast on more. Yeah, I cast on a little bit more stitches for the neck just because I get scared. <laughs> Even though I have a smaller head, sometimes it's a twisted rib, so I was worried it would be like super tight. <laughs> yeah, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. I'm really excited for this. Okay, go back in the bag. I have all my little pins. My little pins. The little knitting brain one was gifted to me by a friend at, when I worked at Lowe's and I love it so much. It's perfect. Ugh, really suits my personality and my likes. Okay, next we have my Soldatna, which is taking me forever. It is knit with mostly yarn from Knit Crate. I'm using the Sprout and also um, where are they? This gorgeous, gorgeous, ugh, baby alpaca, I think. Light alpaca. Yep, 100% baby alpaca. And it is just in the color Ancient Pines. And like, I, I bought, I bought at least like 10 skeins of this just because I fell in love with it. It's absolutely gorgeous. The one that came in my crate, because I had the natural crate, was this color, which is also incredible. And I knit a, oh, what was that sweater? Oh, I knit a love note with this held together with this mohair that I got online and they ended up matching perfectly and I was super happy. But this mohair is like super thick. So you can't tell that it's got this in it just because this mill hair is like wiry, but I have so much of this left. Maybe I'll make a hat, whatever. But yeah, these, the only thing, the only reason why I haven't done any more progress on this because I casted it on so long ago is because the body is gonna be knit with these. I think I'm gonna stick with the brown color, or the chestnut I think this is called, yeah. But it's baby alpaca, so I'm worried it's gonna like be formless when it's done. So I'm kind of scared of that. The yellow is Malabrigo. I think it's just Superwash Merino. I don't know. I have it somewhere. Oh, you know what? It's in this bag. Duh. Okay, bye. Here it is. What the heck? Oh yeah, I put the little tag in here. I'm smart. I know things. What are you? Superwash Merino wool. Yep, I was right. Gorgeous. So gorgeous. This is the yellow that I use. This is what I have left over from my my e-shell. <laughs> is that how you say that? I'm really bad at saying things, which is why I'm leaving out a lot of people's names. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I had left. And I really love this. I love all these colors. I'm just so worried that it's gonna be like to, I don't know, alpaca's drapey from what I hear. I don't have any experience with it, so I'm just scared. But I absolutely love these colors so much. Oh, so gorgeous. Yep, that's my soldatna. It hasn't seen much love. I, I make so many, I've made I think two or three now, um, Caitlin Hunter patterns. And then I get like either all the way through or halfway through and I just tear it up. Cause I don't know, I lose interest or it's not that the pattern isn't interesting. It's just that either I don't like the shape of it or the yarn I chose isn't great. Like it'll ask for a certain weight and I'll use something bigger and then be like, why is this stupid? <laughs> so it's not, it's my issue, but I don't know. It's something about, it's always for Caitlin Hunter <clears throat> Yeah, this is in my little bag that my friend gave me, which I love. 
super cute. Next whip is what one did I put? Hmm, which one do I want to do? We'll do this one. It's in my favorite bag that I made. Super, super awesome bag. This fabric is from a store up the street. We have a little like quilting shop up the street, which is awesome because I get all my fabric there. And then this fabric I found at like a little store in Japan. And I love it so much. The little waves, I love it. And this is a super special pattern. It's for my best friend. And I can't wait to be done with it so she can wear it. It is super wash sport merino, which I dyed. It's from Dyer Supplier. This is the little sleeve. Uh, my shitty bamboo needles. It's got little cabling on the sleeve. Ooh, it's like nice and transparent. I hope this is warm. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, this is just a mess. I'm going to put it down here. Okay. So, I don't know if it'll be easy to see. This is the back. It's got like pretty cable panels. I dyed this yarn too. I call it bleeding out because it's just a gorgeous deep red burgundy. So this pattern is the staghead pattern, staghead pullover. And it has a little deer on it. I don't know if you can see that. He's really cute. I'm gonna do the antlers up into the shoulders. And I'm using my little bone stitch marker. It's something's vertebrae, I can't remember if it's a fox or a cat. It's very tiny, so maybe it's not either. I don't know. But my friend gave me a little box of bones that she found in the woods, and I made stitch markers, so I love them. This pattern is written flat, and I am not a fan of flat patterns that have to be seamed. I'm not a fan of seaming. So I was like, whatever. I took out a few of the stitches in the pattern and just knit it in the round. Made sure all the math made sense. I'm knitting the smallest size, which, I mean, this is pretty big for small size. But it's supposed to be like boxy, I guess. But I'm really enjoying this yarn, ugh, it just has little flecks of like black too. Oh, I love it so much. So pretty and so soft and I can't wait to give it to her. I'm not really sure how I'm going to join the sleeves or I guess do the decreases for the sleeves. I'm pretty sure I've done sweaters before where I've had to improvise the construction because I don't want to knit anything flat <laughs> and seam, but this one's different because it has an actual pattern, like, picture. So I don't want to interfere with any of the the antlers or anything, but I did knit the body longer than it suggests before starting the sleeve decreases, so I feel like the antlers are gonna end a little bit lower than they do in the picture of the pattern. So that might give me some room to do some decreases, hopefully. I really want to get this finished before winter so that I can send it to my friend. But yeah, I love it so much. It's so squishy and I love working on it. It's super fun. And it's really, it was really fun watching the little, the little uh, deer head knit up, super cute. My next whip is an elf male in these amazing colors. They're gorgeous. Probably my favorite colors, orange and green. What a surprise, but it knits up so nice. And this pattern is incredible. You could knit it in completely different colors and it will have It'll look like a completely different sweater. It's just really interesting to see how the fabric knits up depending on what colors you choose. And I'm absolutely in love with this sweater. 
I cannot wait for it to be finished. I'm using yarn from the dreaded Hobby Lobby in the color Hazel Basil. It's got little flecks of purple in it. It's really pretty. And the orange is called Chestnut Ember. And right now, I'm knitting using four different strands because <laughs> the, the two skeins I started with are a little bit lighter than the other ones I got because they're different dye lots. And I was worried about it pulling, even though it's, I mean, I feel like if it did, you wouldn't really be able to tell. There might be like a slight tonal difference, but I don't know. I really, I, I kind of regret doing this. I almost want to like cut one of them, or I guess two of them off and just stick with what I was doing. But I don't know. That's the reason why I haven't been working on this recently because I don't want to deal with this mess. It's it's so tangled and I usually love a good knot, but I, I don't want to deal with it. This one also has a little uh, foot bone um, stitch marker. I love it. I, th I think this one's from a fox. I could be completely wrong. Whatever. Yeah, I didn't, I don't think I made any changes to this unless it requires a short row shaping because I don't do that. I have a weird posture and short row shaping usually just makes the back of my sweaters like bubbled. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I don't enjoy it. I don't like that it leaves like little holes. So yeah, I just, I usually just don't knit the short row shape and it's literally, in most patterns, it's literally like this much space and I don't, I don't care enough. But that is my elf mail. I can't wait till it's done. I just want to wear it. I can't wait till any of this is done, but I also want to enjoy the process because that's really important. I just, I love just looking at it. I'll just pull it out and look at it. And it's in this really cute bag that I got from my friend at Knit Night in Japan. She got two on accident. <laughs> and now I have one. It's got little kittens. The little, little, they're so cute. Ugh, I love them. Okay, next we have my Nightbook sweater by Unwind Knitwear. In this cute bag that I made with herbs on it herbs and like this pretty marbly fabric okay when I tell people I knit and they ask to see what I do this is a sweater I show them because it's immaculate oh this is the first pattern might I add that is the proper length for my body I'm not a big person I'm not very tall Five six, I consider that average. I would love to be taller, but it's just all the patterns that I've ever made. The the bodies, like I usually knit my bodies from the armpit. I knitted about 15 inches, 14, 15 inches before I start the ribbing, which apparently for some people is a lot, because most patterns only do 12. Same thing for the sleeves. Like why are the sleeves so short in all these patterns? Sorry, I'm going on a little rant. Like most patterns are like knit 12 inches and then bind off. And I'm like, if I knit 12 inches, it comes to here. That's not long enough. My arms are like 22 inches long. <laughs> but anyway, this is, this is just, and I dyed this yarn, it's BFL. And I used the same color way as I did with my um, Moonlit Romp yarn. So, ugh. And, this sweater has made me really love BFL. Oh, I did do something differently though with this color. When I dyed this, the BFL for some reason, it wasn't soaking up the black as much. So there were a lot of little specks of the natural color showing through. So I over dyed it with some purple. So there's like, you can tell more up at the top, but 
I don't know if it's gonna pick it up on the camera. There's like little, little flecks of purples, which won't be noticeable to other people, but I'm, I'll notice it and they'll be like, yes, purples. Ugh, and I love the gray. It's just such a good, there's so much depth in the gray. I think I, do I not? I have a ball somewhere of it. Oh, here it is. And it's the same, I literally use the same thing as this. It just turned out lighter. Because this is super washed, so I guess it makes it more, soaks it up more. Which I love them both so much. I named it something. I think it was like dolomite or something, some kind of rock or mineral, but it's so pretty. I love it. And I love the feel of BFL. Oh, so nice. Yeah, I didn't make any different adjustments to this sweater. It's absolutely perfect. I have two other um, unwind knitwear patterns that I need to make that are in my my drop box. Just waiting for me. I just need to get yarn, but I have several other projects ahead of it. <sighs> it's another one I can just stare at forever. Put this back. Okay. My last whip is called the Winter's Night Enchantment. And it is for my husband who wanted a dark green sweater I made a mistake. There we go. He wanted dark green, so I was like, pick out the yarn and pick out a pattern. So he came back with this. It is a drops pattern. It's not too terrible. I I mean, I've knit several drops patterns, and I I like them. I don't have any issues with them, other than the usual, you know. The green is from Hall Patch Yarns. It's called Hemlock Bluffs, and I love it. It's gorgeous. I felt bad because I wanted to take a picture of it for the, because I bought it on Etsy, and I wanted to take a picture of the, of it knit up, because why not? But mo the whole yoke of this sweater is mostly the natural color, which is um, undyed from wet belly fibers. I love them so much. That's where I started getting all my undyed yarn when I want to dye stuff. And this is their Superwash Merino DK weight. And this is also, the green is also Superwash Merino because I don't, I don't trust my husband and I feel like he would just throw it in the thing the washer and I will do my best to police that <laughs> and make sure he doesn't but I am kind of worried about the colors bleeding if I do wash it we'll see I mean if it does it won't be too bad because it'll just be green and I love green but I just think it looks so nice right now I'm about to start there's a little color work portion at the bottom and then I'll do the cuff or the hem, I guess, and then start the sleeves. This one kind of has priority because I have knit him, I think like two sweaters now and frogged them because I, I don't like them. <laughs> Cause he keeps like all the patterns that I find that he likes are knit flat and seamed and I don't want to do that. So I attempt to do them in the round or I did start one that was flat and I ripped it back because I was like, this is not, this isn't fun for me. <laughs> and I like it to be fun. I want to enjoy knitting while I'm doing it. I don't want it to feel like a chore, which is why I don't sell things or, or knit things when people demand them. This 
has a cute little mushroom stitch marker. I have a ton of little mushroom stitch markers. I don't, oh, I have them all in a little box somewhere, but I don't remember where I put it. Uh, my stuff is so disorganized right now. But I'll put in the name of the shop where I got it because I cannot remember. There's little mushrooms. I think I also got pine cones, which I love. But I'm knitting this to pattern. Nothing special, nothing crazy. I don't, I think it did have um, short row shaping and I just, I don't do that. So we didn't do it. And that's all of my whips. I have some wannabe projects that I'm excited about. The first one is a Maya cardigan, which will be my first cardigan. I am using these colors in a beige. Where is it? The beige. Oh no. Okay. Avalanche. These colors, um, I've never steeked before, so I'm really excited about that. I will definitely be filming that because we love a good steaking. This is going to be the button band and the the hem. Why can I not remember that word? Which is what is used in the original pattern. Um, the green, actually this is rust heather I believe. The green is a pine green and it's going to be the body. And then this is the beige something, I think. And it's going to be like the background of the color work. And then I'm either going to use this, which I think is golden heather or something like that. Either this or the celery green, which I bought originally but it's on back order so I bought this as a backup but I might I don't know I might just use this because <laughs> I I was worried about having too much of the greens but I don't know and then I realized that this is the exact colors of my soldatna and it made me laugh but they're my colors I know what I'm about and it's so mm, I love it so much this is the first time I'm using Let Lopi. I've never felt it before, and I I absolutely love it. I made my husband feel it, and he was like, no, there's no way. <laughs> it's just, you, you have to have an appreciation for the feeling of wool, natural wool. It's just, it's special. I like it. I love it. Uh-oh, oh my god. Okay. We're just gonna pretend that everything's fine. There we go. Uh, secondly, another cardigan I'm gonna be working on is the possibility of crows. I got this Nitsie Woolly Warmth wool in a little pre-order package by Bistitual Yarns or Bistitual.ca on Instagram. They have like a little thing where you go pick out your size and the colors you want and super easy. So this is going to be a possibility of crows by Disyarning and I'm so excited. I've been eyeing this pattern since like literally the first picture that was put out of a little sneak peek of it and that was a while ago and I'm so happy it's finally out. I'm so happy. I cannot wait. It's going to be uh it's going to be cardigan season. It'll be nice to just I'm gonna live in this. I was gonna say it'll be nice to throw out the house, but I'm literally gonna wear it everywhere. Don't worry about that. Okay, what else is there? I also have this yarn that I bought while we were in New York visiting my friend. It is from a little alpaca farm in Boston, New York. I bought it in Buffalo, which is like kind of where I'm from, but it's it's like so soft. Ugh, I just don't know what to make with it. I want to make a cowl, but I have so many cowls. But I wear them a lot because I work on a farm and it gets windy in the winter. The, the four days of the winter that are cold because I live in America's basement. But I don't know. I, I have to make something special out of it because it's, it's from my home, kind of. <laughs> I love... I think I'm going to make a point to buy local yarn everywhere we visit. I wish I would have done that in Japan. We, there was some yarn shops. We went to um, Nara, where the deer are, and there, were, there was a yarn shop there, and I should have bought something. 
it was just, I was using acrylic at that time and everything just seemed so expensive. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna spend like $30 on a skin of yarn. And look at me now. I have a whole <laughs> cube organizer full of it. But yeah, if you have any ideas of what I should make with this, I don't really want to make a hat. I don't know if alpaca is the best for a hat anyway. But definitely something small. I mean, I'm thinking a cowl. So I, I was thinking mittens, but then I just, I would ruin them. So I'm afraid. I think a cowl would be perfect because it's so soft. But that's it for my yarn. My new yarns, little acquisitions. I don't think I have anything else new besides plants. If you like plants, this is new. My little philodendron lichens. It's beautiful. Oh, the leaves are satiny and they're red underneath. So pretty. Oh, dreamless plant right here. My silver pothos is like trying to get up in its way. It's fine. Look at all these babies. Look at all these babies. Ugh. That's a new plant. And I also got a philodendron repetophoria, I think is it called. It has a new baby right here. This is like, this was the top of my list. I've had so many of these in my Etsy cart from different online shops. And I found this at a plant shop in a mall that we randomly found. And I literally had every single plant in that plant shop except for this one, so I bought it. And it is now my baby. It's in pretty, I mean, it's not in terrible shape, but some of the leaves are like this one. I don't know. This one has a little thing up here. This one doesn't even have any splits but it'll do better now that it's here. Well, there was a leaf here that broke off. My goodness, what did those people do to this poor baby? You'll have a good home here though. <laughs> and I also got this little sticker when I went to that shop. It's a little Monstera. I was thinking about putting it on my car, but um, my car has a theme and it is not plants, so I might put it on my computer, but I don't know if I have any room because I have Batman Totoro and Demon Slayer stickers all over it. But yeah, I gotta put it somewhere special. Oh man, so many possibilities. It's so cute. I'm so happy. I'm so weird with stickers. Like I, it's gotta have the perfect spot because it's going to be there forever. So you really have to think about it. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I also am planning on making mini silver mittens out of this yarn from Big Sky Yarn Co. Um, I have the little cards. I know the orange is called Mr. Beam with an M. Yeah, Mr. Beam on their star soft base. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Well, that's a lot of nylon. And this, the other one is sand like sugar. I think it's based off either Destin Beach or Pensacola. I can't remember what the lady said at the shop. This is my Christmas tin full of my, my thingies. <laughs> so I know what, what everything is. What else? I'm gonna have some tea. What else, what else, what else? <clears throat> oh, my needles. So, I got this Knit Pick set. It was my first set of interchangeable needles. Before this, I had those gross ones you get on Amazon in like the giant bulk order, but they have like that gummy cord that is very weak and breaks and the stitches stick to it and I hate it. Don't ever buy that. 
I know it sounds like a good deal. Don't do it. It's gross. You'll hate it. You'll be frustrated more than anything. These are amazing. I haven't had any problems with these. Uh, the week I got them, my dog Link ate <laughs> my 3.5 millimeters. So I had to buy new ones of that. But other than that, these have been going strong for like five, six years. I don't know. Shoot. I got the purple ones. Purple and blue. This packaging is really dirty. But they're really pretty. I love them very much. And then I wanted to get non-wooden ones, so I bought the Knitter's Pride Carbons or something, which are okay. They have, there's like little, it was painted on the numbers and sizes, but over using them so much, the paint rubbed off, but they also have them on the little metal part, which is good. Some of them are changing colors from being used a lot. And the only downside with this is that when I got them, the number four, the US four and the US seven, there were no threads in the, the ends. So that kind of sucked. And I didn't think that I could do anything about it. So I just was like, okay, I guess I don't have those needles. So yeah, I don't have those because man, the metal really scraping off to copper there. But yeah, other than that, I, I love these. I think maybe in the future, if I get another set, I'll get full metal because these are still a bit grippy. And it was nice when I was starting out to have the more grippy needles, but now that I want to like fly, <laughs> it's, it's like, I gotta yank the dang stitches across and I'm, it's frustrating, but I love them. I love them all. And then I got more knit picks. These are my DPNs. I love them. I I wish they were shorter. Like they're they're pretty short. But I wish I had bigger sizes, like bigger needle sizes. These are six inch. I think I'd be good with like five inch. Because I don't I really especially like these ones, they're way too long. This is one of those, I got a cheapo pack. I also have metal ones somewhere that I don't ever use because they're, they're way too long. This is way too much, especially for a little sleeve like this. Like I don't, I usually keep my stitches pretty bunched up while I knit so that I can get through them quicker. I don't like spreading them out so much. So all of this extra stuff is just wasted space and it gets in my way. So that'll probably be my next project, is getting shorter DPNs, I don't know. Because I, I like using DPNs for like sleeves and stuff, but I just, I definitely don't like magic loop that much. I'll use it, but I don't, it's not my go-to. Well, that's all I have today. I'm so glad you came to join me and sit with me while I rambled on about all of this stuff that I'm doing. I'm really excited about this and I hope to film maybe every two weeks depending. I don't really knit that often because I play a lot of video games so my time is kind of split between knitting and video games but I need to try to get some of this stuff finished so I can start my cardigans so we will see. I post a lot on Instagram if you don't follow me there. Um, I'm always posting in my stories and fair warning there's a lot of rat content and lizard content if you're afraid of those just beware that that's there and I post a lot of pictures and videos of my puppies I'm sorry if there was any background noises that were annoying or anything this is my first time using this camera this microphone so I have no idea what any of this is gonna sound like sorry if my rats were being loud they're usually asleep right now but they're curious as to what I'm doing so they're being crazy 
But yeah, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.